Good evening everyone. I hope you all are having a good Friday evening. God always puts someone in your life that is a thorn in your flesh. <laughs> He's put a person in my life that absolutely hates my guts. And the person is probably one of the most angry, hostile Bible deniers I've ever met to this date, you know. And he finishes out whenever I give scriptures that show that God has authorized evil, God has created evil, Isaiah 45. Is there not evil in the city, and the Lord hath not done it? And even the wicked are created for the day of evil. When I point out vessels of wrath fitted for destruction, and I point out all the other scriptures that show reprobation, he gets so angry. He says, I'm an old man preaching to false doctrine. He'll be glad when I'm my, me and my son are dead. Okay, that's, that's what he says. And yet he says he does he says he's not an Arminian and he says he doesn't believe in free will, but he comes against all the scriptures like the Arminians do that show that God is sovereign over evil. I always ask the same question to people. Who created Lucifer? Who created him? And Lucifer was created a non-elect angel. If God had wanted to create Lucifer as an elect angel, he would have created him as an elect angel. The Bible says the children being not yet born, not having done any good or evil, that the purpose of God according to election might stand. Jacob have I loved, Esau have I hated. You know, and yet he tells me I'm taking all these scriptures out of context. Well, I'm just reading scripture. I'm just reading. Reading the scriptures. I pointed out the fact that God is the one that hardened Pharaoh's heart. He said, For this very same purpose have I raised thee up, that my name might be declared throughout all the earth. Who raised Pharaoh up and hardened his heart? You know. And yes, God is holy, righteous, and just. He says, God is, is holy and without any sin. I never call God a sinner. I said God authorized sin. You know, that's what I said. He is over evil. He is not evil. He is over evil. And by the way, God does not have to keep his own laws that he has prescripted for his creation to keep. God is independent of his creatures. He's not dependent upon his creatures for anything. He does all things well. And I pointed out to this person that he's using all the arguments that the Arminians use, you know. And he is a thorn in my flesh. He absolutely hates me with a vengeance. He's put multiple, multiple videos up on social media lamb blasting me, mainly because of my position on God being sovereign over evil. You know? Is there unrighteous with God? God forbid. Can the thing say to him that formed it, Why hast thou made me thus? And then it goes on to point out that God has created vessels of wrath fitted for destruction, and he's created vessels of honor. And he's in total denial of this. He can't accept this fact. <laughs> well, why am I pointing this out? God is always going to bring people into your life that are going to hate you with a vengeance. And we're commanded to love our enemies. Okay? And that's hard to do, but God being gracious to me will 
cause me to love this person who hates me so much and is my a thorn in my flesh God will cause me to love him anyway okay I wish no evil upon this person even though I adamantly disagree with his interpretation of scripture you know and I think that only God can cause us to you know say the same thing that Christ says what does Christ say Father forgive them for they know not what they do he doesn't know how deeply he's hurt me by his unkind comments and I have probably made some unsavory comments to him it's real easy to get in the flesh over these things is it not So, anyway. Oh, they tell me of a home far beyond the skies. Oh, they tell me of a home far away. Oh, they tell me of a home where no storm clouds rise. Oh, they tell me of an unclouded day. Oh, the land of cloudless day. Oh, the land of an unclouded sky. Oh, they tell me of a home where no storm clouds rise. Oh, they tell me of an unclouded day. Oh, they tell me of a home where my friends have gone. Oh, they tell me of that land far away where the tree of life eternal forever blooms. Shed its fragrance through the unclouded day. Oh, they tell me of a king in his beauty there. And they tell me that mine eyes shall be whole. Where he sits on the throne that is whiter than snow In the city that is made of gold Oh, they tell me that he smiles on his children there And his smile drives their sorrows all away And they tell me that no tears ever come again In that lovely land of unclouded day Oh, the land of cloudless day. Oh, the land of an uncloudy sky. Oh, they tell me of a home where no storm clouds rise. Oh, they tell me of an unclouded day. I will make the darkness light before thee. What is wrong, I'll make it right before thee. All thy battles I will fight before thee, and the high place I'll bring down. When thou walkest by the way, I'll lead thee. On the fatness of the land, I'll feed thee. And a mansion in the sky I'll deed thee, And the high place I'll bring down. With an everlasting love I'll love thee, Though with trials deep and sore I'll prove thee. But there's nothing that can hurt or move thee, And the high place I'll bring down. Although Satan in his rage would tear thee, And with all his winning arts would snare thee, Even down to thine old age I'll bear thee, And the high place I'll bring down. I will make the darkness light before thee, 
I will make the crooked straight before thee. I will spread my wings protecting over thee. And the high place I'll bring down. When thou walkest by the way I'll lead thee. On the fatness of the land I'll feed thee. And a mansion in the sky I'll deed thee. And the high place I'll bring down. Well, I'm glad we don't have to rely upon the acceptance of other people. I'm glad that we can firmly rest in the Word of God and we don't have to feel ashamed when we're trying to stand up for something that maybe even theologians are in disagreement with. Okay? There are theologians out there that are promoting this lie that man and that God is you know there's this warfare between Satan and and God and God is not sovereign over Satan I'm here to tell you that God is sovereign over Satan <laughs> you know and he is in complete control and power and you know if we have if we have Satan getting the upper hand on God we've got a problem don't we I mean, I don't want to trust um, a God that can be thwarted by Satan. When the toils of life are over and we lay our burden down and we bid farewell to earth with all its care we shall meet and greet our loved ones and our Christ we then shall crown in the new Jerusalem they'll be singing they'll be shouting when the saints go marching home in jerusalem in jerusalem waving palms with loud hosannas and the king shall take his throne in the new jerusalem though the way is sometimes lonely he will hold me with his hand through the testings and the trials i must go but I'll trust and gladly follow, for sometimes I'll understand in the new Jerusalem. When the last goodbye is spoken and the tear stain wiped away, and our eyes shall clutch a glimpse of glory fair, then with bounding hearts we'll meet him who hath washed our sins away in the new Jerusalem. When we join the ransomed army in the summer land above, and the face of our dear Savior we behold, we will sing and shout forever, and we'll grow in perfect love in the new Jerusalem. Well, they'll be singing, they'll be shouting when the saints come marching home in Jerusalem, in Jerusalem waving palms with loud hosanna as the king shall take his throne in the new Jerusalem. Well, I don't know how the Arminians can reject so much of scripture and still say they're a follower of the king and still say they're a follower of Christ. If they don't believe God's own word how can they take on the name of Christ well may the good Lord be with you tonight in a special way is my prayer God bless